This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 677. Top 10 Ways to Increase Your Energy by Laura Carter of lauracarter.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, including Healthline, Ben Greenfield Fitness, and lots more. Now, before we get to the post, don't forget, we give away a book to a random person on our mailing list on the first of every month. So if you wanna be in the drawing, make sure you're on our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. I'll give you another quick reminder at the end of the show. But for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Top 10 Ways to Increase Your Energy by Laura Carter of lauracarter.com. But first, let's talk about some factors that decrease your energy. One, the foods you eat that can decrease your energy. Coffee, tea, and soft drinks. According to David Crow, owner of floracopia.co, stimulants are almost always used to support an overworked lifestyle or to push the body and mind to perform at the expense of sleep and cumulative nutrient and immune deficits. Coffee and tea in certain circumstances may hide a deep fatigue they may be putting a Band-Aid on a gushing wound. As a result, we may be even more deprived because we haven't addressed the core of the issue. Processed foods. Too many processed foods that contain simple sugars or excessive amounts of salt can also decrease our energy. They lack the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals necessary for vitality. Too much protein, or not enough. Protein takes our bodies longer to digest. So when we eat too much of it, our digestive system may spend a lot of energy metabolizing it and getting rid of its waste. The result may be low energy, fatigue, fogginess, and even this feeling of heaviness. But too little protein could also be a problem, especially if you live on a mainly vegan or raw diet. From the point of view of Ayurveda, some of us need a little more grounding foods depending on our nature. By the way, this has nothing to do with the blood type diet. Some of us have a tendency towards being highly hyperactive and prone to overthinking, anxiety, and worry. In Ayurveda, we call this a vata imbalance. In order to feel more balanced, we need to make sure we have foods that ground us. If we don't address this, then chances are we will start experiencing low energy. It's even more important to have a little more protein than usual during the winter time. In its infinite intelligence, the body might be able to cater to our need for energy-giving protein in the winter by creating more bacteria in the gut that can metabolize protein. Alcohol, artificial sweeteners, and trans fats. Trans fats are found in processed baked goods and are used to help that product have a longer shelf life. Harder to digest than fresh baked goods made with little or better quality fats, trans fats and chemicals and artificial sweeteners may decrease our energy. Alcohol also has a depressant effect that slows down our nervous system and disturbs normal sleep patterns. Two, a lack of exercise and movement. A sedentary life robs us of our energy. Sitting long hours in front of a computer at work and then sitting long hours in front of the TV set once we're home only makes us more tired and unmotivated to move. Three, emotional stress. Stress, especially emotional stress, can decrease our energy big time. That's because emotional stress is usually long-term. Most of us are not just able to easily let go of our distress. Rather, we can hold on to it for months, sometimes years. That then creates a state of chronic stress. Anytime we're reminded of the situation or the person that was the origin of the distress, our body is flooded with stress hormones that waste all of our energy to prepare for flight or fight. Four, a lack of profound restful sleep. Now, can you think of other factors that rob you of this energy? How about hormones? Well, yes and no. Our hormones are affected by stress and how sedentary we are and diet and sleep. So how can you gain your energy back? Here are the top 10 ways to increase your energy. Number one, reduce caffeine. Let's say you rely on caffeine as a Band-Aid. You're really sleep deprived, but you realize that you use caffeine to perk you up you may want to consider reducing your caffeine intake so that you're better able to address the underlying fatigue with lifestyle strategies. Two, drink water. Many of us are chronically dehydrated. We don't drink enough water. And as we age, we lose our sense of thirst. Oftentimes when we have low energy, all we need is to hydrate. Three, eat fresh green vegetables. Green vegetables are full of nutrients. 
They're great for lifting the mood and strengthening our immune system. Four, use less processed sweeteners. Avoid artificial sweeteners or chemicalized sugar as often as possible. If you do use sweetener, consider honey, maple syrup, or sugar, coconut palm sugar, and whole fruit paste. But of course, use those in moderation. Five, get physical activity. Start with simple activities like walking or even a yoga class. Start with 15 minutes a day and increase five minutes every week. Six, get more sleep, rest, and relaxation. Go to bed a little earlier. Studies show that you don't get the same kind of rest when you sleep from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. when compared to if you had slept from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Take a break from your hectic life. Disconnect from social media for a day. Seven, evaluate the amount of protein you eat. Fill your plate with well-cooked and spiced green vegetables like broccoli, zucchini, cauliflower, collard greens, and spinach. Eight, take time for self-care. Find activities that make you feel good. Take a bath, get a massage, watch your favorite movie, read an inspiring book or whatever you enjoy. Learn how to do something new. Nine, practice spirituality. Find ways to connect with your spiritual nature. Pray, meditate, listen to affirmations, go out in nature. And 10, surround yourself with like-minded people. Seek out people in your life who support and love you unconditionally. Hang out with people who inspire and elevate you. So, what's one action step you can take today to increase your energy? You just listened to the post titled Top 10 Ways to Increase Your Energy by Laura Carter of lauracarter.com. Dr. Neil here again for my commentary. Now, what's the difference between sleep, rest, and relaxation? Because each of those is different, but we use them synonymously. Sleep, that's probably the highest priority, getting deep, restful sleep. Now, each of us have our own rhythms. A few weeks back, I read an article about how our circadian rhythms are different depending on which age group we fall in. Some researchers are discovering that there are some prime hours, again, depending on your age, where it may be best to actually be asleep. We're finding that younger folks tend to do better when they fall asleep later or even in the early morning hours and then sleep till noon the next day. Whereas others of us function better when we do go to bed at, let's say, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. and then wake up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. the next day. This will take some self-experimenting to see what works for you, though. I know for me, I do perform a lot better when I'm in bed by 9.30, 10 p.m. and I'm up at roughly 6 or 7 a.m. the next day. So I would say the first priority would be to get some uninterrupted sleep and aim for at least seven hours per night. Rest. Rest is a little different. Rest, you might still be awake or maybe you don't get into that deep REM restorative sleep, but it's still important. Resting your body and your mind, even though you may not be falling asleep, is still a great thing. Relaxation. I think rest and relaxation are pretty synonymous, but For me, I always think of relaxation involving some sort of light activity like yoga or meditating or getting a massage. For me, that's relaxing. I'm not really resting, but I'm doing something that's helping me relax. You may define it differently and that's fine. The point is you want to be sure that you get enough sleep and enough rest and relaxation. Now, before I go, don't forget, We do book giveaways on the first of every month to random people on our mailing list. So if you want to be a part of that, plus get some free spreadsheet tools from us and more, come by oldpodcast.com and join the weekly newsletter. It's totally free and a great way to show your support. And make sure you join before the end of the month, which is coming up really quickly. Again, you can join at oldpodcast.com. All right, that's it for today. I hope you have a great Tuesday. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I'll be back here tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, 
and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.